Looking for breakdowns on Yanni versus Ashnaw in the great Michigan and Nebraska matches over the weekend? Then let's stop stalling and start talking wrestling. What's going on, wrestling fans? My name is Josiah, and welcome to the Fanco Wrestling YouTube channel in this segment called Wrestling Headlines. In, in recent wrestling headlines, there were some great wrestling over the weekend, both in folk style in college wrestling as well as in freestyle where we saw some great events such as Spartan Combat RTC and the not the Burroughs David Taylor card which is postponed until this Wednesday but the Adeline Gray and Tamira Mensa stock card which was an exciting card to even without David Taylor and Jordan Burroughs so first let's talk about this Cornell card which was the Spartan Combat card which happened on Friday night we saw a lot of great matches a lot of younger guys at Cornell being able to wrestle and as we know, since Cornell can't wrestle a D1 season, their coaches were looking for some extra matches, a way to get their guys some extra matches. And although they weren't all folk style, they were freestyle, we still saw some great wrestling. And there was a large undercard, which I did not even, I wasn't even able to watch the whole undercard, but I did watch some of the main event, or I did watch the main event, and that was Arujao versus uh, Colloquio, where Arujao was able to tech him 11 to zip, Gabe Dean and Mike Machiavello put on a show 5-5, five to five, and Kyle Dake was able to tech David McFadden in the main event, which was 11-0 to zero score, and then also, we have to talk about the Yanni and Ashnault match where Yanni teched Ashnault 11, or excuse me, 10 to zip. Now, before I get into the Yanni and Ashnault match, the one thing I want to talk about is the Dake and McFadden match. I was impressed with Dake's wrestling as usual, as you know, you would be with a guy who was one of the best guys in the entire world. But the one thing I wasn't impressed by, it kind of seemed like he was phoning it in. In the interviews leading up to the event, and even going out onto the mat, he, he just kind of seemed like he was walking right through Mc, uh, McFadden the entire time. He was like a practice dummy to him. I don't know. I didn't really like to see that, but the guy who wasn't phoning it in was Yanni. Yanni brings it every single match. Not to say Dake didn't bring it because he did, but Yanni is just such a thrill to watch wrestle. And I also want to say, Ashnault put it all out there on the line. He really did. I want to say that there usually is a certain swagger or or a way, a way that kind of the Jersey guys act. And I wouldn't say that Ashnault's like that at all. He's an extremely humble wrestler. I really like that about him in the pressures, in the interviews, and before and after, and, and even during the match. That was Anthony Ashnault. But Yanni was just too much for him. He was able to take him down in the first and get a step out. He was up 3-0 to zero leading into the break. And Yanni was kind of upset. You could kind of see it on his face. He wasn't too happy. So he gets into the, right after the break, he takes Ashnault down, gets two more points. They get back to their feet. It's 5-0. to zip. Yanni doubles in straight on Ashnault. Lifts him up to the ceiling off of his feet and down back onto the mat for exposure. Ends the match. 10 zip tech. What an exciting, thrilling match. I love to see Yanni wrestle. I love to see just everything that he does. He's such a thrill to watch wrestle, as I said, and a great event at the Spartan Combat RTC. As we transition into the second night, and then I'll talk a little bit about Michigan, Nebraska, those, I mean, just great college wrestling matches that did happen over the weekend. I want to talk about the Tamira Metro Stock as well as Adeline Gray card and what a card it was. Now, this was, this happened on Saturday night, put on by Flow Wrestling because the David Taylor and Burroughs card was postponed until Wednesday, at least the main event. Every other match happened, but the main event, which was upsetting that we didn't get that but we're still getting it this Wednesday. Now, this that is January 13th. So, what were some of the events that happened? First, I want to talk about the main event, which is kind of cool that we got Tamira Mensa Stock and Adeline Gray wrestling. Now, Stock was able to beat Gray a four to zip decision, was able to beat her. Uh, and this may be actually the first main card where there, or event where there's a woman's main card as the main event. I think that's kind of cool that, that they were able to put on a show, you know, that whenever DT and JB pulled out, they just made Gray and Tamir uh, meant to stock at the main event. Pretty cool. Pretty cool to see that happen. And it was an exciting match. So what else happened in the event? Well, Gross wrestled yet again in another one of these cards. I mean, he's just getting all the competition that he can in these in each of these events. He was able to beat Zane Richards 11 to 3, just really took it to him. And he, I mean, he's just looking strong coming into 2021 as we get into these trials in a couple months. Already has wins over Bryce Meredith and Thomas Gilman in the past couple months. Gross is just looking good. Lee Zach tacked. McDonough. I mean, there were a couple guys that came out of retirement here. One was Matt McDonough. The other was Win Mahalik. Uh, unfortunately, neither of those guys won. But we did see, I mean, the Lezak and McDonough match, I mean, 
geez, Lezak is just he just had such a unique style, not only in, in folk style, but now in freestyle we're seeing. He was able to take down McDonough. He just kind of got him into uh, a nice crab ride and is able to expose him right on top. He just went straight into backpack mode as we're, as we're used to seeing. And so why are we surprised that we're seeing this in freestyle? But he was able to uh, tech McDonough in what a match, man. What a match. Joey McKenna was able to also get a tech fall against Garrett. He beat him 12-2 to against Nashawn Garrett. Beat him... Uh, uh, it was able to get it feet to back right off the start, and then Garrett was able to get a takedown. Was able to or takedown for two is four to two at the break, and then McKenna just turned it on. Uh, picked up a takedown, went straight to a gut wrench, and that's really when the match was over. It was twelve to two, tech fall, any one. Green and Lugo, not a lot to say here. Green was able to get a takedown, and and Lugo was pushing the pace until the very end of the match, but. Green ended up winning the match 3-2. to two. Jaden Cox, cool to see him return to the mat. But unfortunately, I mean, not a... He just didn't look like himself for some reason. Uh, I mean, he's probably just shaking the rust off. So we'll see that change in the upcoming months. But, you know, I, he won. He won. And we'll leave it at that. This Wednesday, Jordan Burroughs and David Taylor will be wrestling this Wednesday, and that is, we're also going to get an undercard of that. I wasn't sure if we were going to get an undercard for that event, but kind of cool that we're going to be getting it. Jaden Cox will be taking on Nate Jackson, and Seth Gross and Joey McKenna are going to be wrestling, so kind of cool that we're going to be getting this uh, going on. Now, before I get to the next topic, which is talking about Michigan and Rutgers and Nebraska and Minnesota, I mean, what a match between, what a couple of great duels between those teams. But the First, I want to talk about the Jordan Burroughs uh, while we're talking about him. He made an appearance on Joe Rogan, which is the number one podcast in the world. You can watch, actually listen to it uh, on Spotify, which is a super interesting podcast. Uh, I believe it's episode one. It was episode 1591. They discuss a lot of things on the show, such as weight cutting, wrestling compared to MMA. There's a lot of interesting things there. And one of my very uh, favorite topic so far. Uh, full disclosure, I'm not all the way through the episode yet, through the podcast. I'm about halfway through it, but you're talking about the McDonald's and the Olympic Village and all the behind the scenes there, you know, besides the obviously just the wrestling they're talking about the behind the scenes and I thought that was super interesting to be able to hear about some of that from Jordan Burroughs. So you can check that out on Joe Rogan. Highly recommend that you check that out. Now, let's talk about the Michigan and Rutgers match. Michigan just rolled through this weekend. They beat uh, Rutgers 26-10, to and they beat Maryland 38-3. to You can watch a lot of these clips right here on YouTube. I actually have a lot of these things linked down in the description below for every, everything I'm talking about. But, man, the first thing we have to talk about is uh, Dylan Ragusen, who pinned number 20 Nick Aguilar in the first period. His college debut, as well as he got a bonus point decision over King Sandoval, uh, at Maryland. He's able to get a major decision against him. What a match there. What a, I mean, seriously, what a match. Uh, Dylan Grusin made his appearance at uh, for Michigan, and now we're seeing that there are no weak weights for Michigan. But the one person we didn't see this weekend was Miles Amin, and he didn't wrestle in either of these matches, which I found was kind of a shame that we didn't get to see him wrestle. Uh, we saw somebody else fill in for him at 184, but I hope that we get to see him soon. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but we also saw uh, Sebastian Rivera, who uh, earned a win for Rutgers, as well as Mason Paris, who earned a major decision for Michigan. So, you know, Rutgers got the wins where we kind of expected them to, but Michigan was able to pull up some nice upsets. Uh, Matten started out strong against Rivera, like I said, the Rivera match, but all, overall, like I kind of watch it, a little bit of a boring match. Rivera was just able to ride him out uh, and was able to get a tilt in for backs. Uh, ended up getting the major decision in the end, but not in a super exciting match, to be honest with you. Uh, Grello. Got the first takedown on Massa, and I, I give him credit for that, for coming out strong and, and getting that takedown against Massa, not giving him, uh, I guess, the credit. But Massa, was, he was just too much. He ended up winning 13-5 to in a, a great match for Massa. And like I said, no Miles Amin. We saw Cam Amin. We saw him made his dish Michigan debut, uh, had a solid Michigan debut, but no Miles. We'll see what happens in the upcoming weekend. The next match that we have to talk about is Nebraska. Nebraska beat Minnesota. They beat them 
pretty handily, but as, as I kind of expected, maybe a little bit closer than I thought, but for the most part, they, they beat him pretty handily. So uh, Cronin made his debut in a Nebraska singlet. Cronin, initially from Indiana, transferred to Nebraska, was able to beat number 14, Pat McKee. We also saw, as you see in this clip, uh, Labriola get a nice pin, and some of the other main Nebraska guys, you know, they're, they're ranked guys, uh, getting some nice wins uh, against Minnesota. And we saw, like I said, so, some of these other guys. Um, some of the other things I want to mention, though, is Brayton Lee. Brayton Lee bumped up a weight to 157. He was able to get a decision against licking. So that was interesting change up for Minnesota. We saw Gilbert Stevenson get the tech fall. Not really a surprise there. The biggest, I guess, surprise, other than, you know, the, the, the Cronin and McKee match, I mean, that wasn't a huge surprise. Could have went either way, but a nice win nonetheless. Sparks was able to beat uh, number 15, Peyton Robb. And, and that was kind of a, an unfortunate match for Nebraska to lose that. But there were some other nice upsets. Brock Hardy beating Michael Block is 9-2. That was a nice upset, number 19, Michael Block. Is, uh, he was able to get the near fall, get some ride time. Very nice match. Nathan Haas beating uh, Owen Webster 5-2 to two with over three minutes of riding time. And what a match that was. Uh, Nebraska was able to get the win over Minnesota in the end, proving why Nebraska as well as Michigan are over at, at that top spot. So what were your interesting, exciting matches over the weekend? What news uh, did you like? What, what were you excited about over the weekend? Please let me know. And join in the Fanco Wrestling Show live this Wednesday night. Make sure you join me at 7 o'clock right here on the Fanco Wrestling YouTube channel.